Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim, supporting traders globally and achieving their financial security and freedom. I love stocks. Today's date is October the 21st, 2019, and we have a great watch list for you today. Oh yeah, we're going to talk about <clears throat> Beyond Meats, Teva, UPS, and ONTX. So we're going to talk about Beyond Meats because as you guys know, this is the fake meat company. And uh, this had a rollout back in, um, I think a few months back, three months ago, back in Manhattan. And they launched this at the Dunkin' Donuts stores. They were actually testing, you know, doing a test pilot on how the Beyond Meat product was going to sell. And you know what? Shockingly, it is, uh, the sales forecast in Manhattan was double than what they even predicted. It actually has become the number two selling sandwich in Manhattan. It actually surpassed only by bacon, egg, and cheese on a bagel. So you know what? As a result, um, they actually are launching this nationwide at the Dunkin' Donut locations in more than 9,000 locations. And this will start November the 6th. And this was for, uh, formally announced uh, today officially. So I guess the test pilot really went well. And so they're very excited to now branch this out to 9,000 Dunkin' Donut stores. So that's uh, fantastic. I guess the demand is there, right? That's right. So Jim, let's hear about your options trade and uh, also about this chart. Yeah, I got in the options contract today at the 115 strike for October 2019. And I got it, I had to, I bought some and then I bought more and brought my cost average to 115. So I'm I'm bullish on this trade. I've been bullish on it for a long time. I've been fighting the bears on this trade also. So they're still going to be trying to bring this stock down, but I think we hit exactly where I wanted it to hit at and I called it out in the room over the weekend. I said 105.95. We hit that today. We actually hit 105.56. This had a high of 239.71 and analysts had it uh, brought down to 125 one guy came down here and said that in a way but I'm, I'm satisfied with that 105.95 and we did hit a high today I'll bring up the 20-day chart this is a TTM squeeze we have the 9 the 34 and the 200 on it so this is one of my charts that I use when I'm following trends it did sell off first thing this morning and hit that support hit a double bottom to be exact and I love them double bottoms I knew we were going to have a supply out of it today because of the way it bounced pre-market and it hit that 115. So I hesitated and I waited for the options trade to pull back and maybe hit that double bottom again. And it sure, that's right where we hit. And then we ran all the way up. So I've got seven contracts to this. I'm bullish on it. I think I can take it to 115 and maybe I'll start putting it on my watch list. Well, I've got it on my watch list, but I'll start trading it more. And we're just going to go ahead and move on to the next ticker. And that next ticker is Teva. Okay, so we're going to talk about Teva. Uh, you know, this is one of the ones that uh, Teva Pharmaceuticals, you know, I'm a big fan of Israeli uh, tickers. And Teva, obviously, is an Israeli company. Um, they also have a location in the U.S. Uh, but Teva Pharmaceuticals did search because they did have a settlement announcement that would resolve all the allegations with regards to the opioid crisis. Um, so under the deal, Teva is definitely going to be donating $23 billion. That's a lot of money in opioid addiction treatment drugs and pay $250 million over the next 10 years. Um, so the um, stock did rise earlier in the trading day. Uh, it ended up on the day more than 8%. And, um, you know, the company said they are in agreement with a group of attorneys from North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Texas, and Tennessee. And they're very happy to finally resolve this in a positive manner and obviously helping to contribute to solve a nationwide opioid epidemic. So, Jim, let's hear about this uh, Teva chart because it did have a nice little pop and then I see a little bit of a pullback here. So yep. what can we see? Well, you know, <laughs> I'm still a little bit bearish on it, but I'm not 100% bullish on it. So I'm about a 50-50 gamble here. I did jump in on the option, so I'm going to swing this into to tomorrow. We And we know that Buffett's involved in this trade too, so he likes the company. So we had a yearly high of 23.97, and it pulled all the way back with this opioid crisis and all the blame mongering to 6.07. I don't personally think it's their responsibility, but 
you know, life goes on. So we got to hit a double top up here right around the 844 area. And we hit that today and the next resistance levels, and we're going to pull this on up to a 20 day chart, or at least look at the yearly. And I can probably get a better look on the yearly here for a new resistance and a new some new supports. We're going to look at the year real fast. So I'm seeing maybe another bounce up. I'm going to say right around the 884, and we did hit that, so that's probably where I might exit. But we got to bust this double top area, and that double top is at 844. So we're going to pull up the 20-day chart. And have a look at it. I like to kind of just look at it. 884 is going to be my resistance for tomorrow. Pullback support is going to be no lower. I like to see that 786 hold. If that doesn't hold, it's going to dip on down to a lower support. And I see that lower support right here at 750. So if it doesn't start showing a positive move tomorrow, I'm going to go ahead and get out of the trade. But well, these are the support levels. We've got a low low at 750. We're going to have that probably at third support there at 771 that second one here at 786 and that first one at 806 that I called out in the room and then we've got the resistance levels at 844 and 884 and that's going to be Tiva I think we're going to be on the rebound but that's an awful lot of money 45 48 billion dollars and we're just going to have to see what happens with it the next one we're going to talk about, which also had some great news today with the pharmaceutical companies, uh, UPS. Miss Vegas? Yes. Yeah, so, you know what? UPS, you guys know, UPS is uh, United Parcel Service. And as you guys know, they're involved in the courier delivery and they have a lot of uh, their own aircrafts um, that deliver things worldwide. And they're actually expanding their drone subsidiary called UPS Flight Forward. And they're actually doing this with several healthcare and hospital network consumers. Uh, and one of them actually is with CVS. So they have an agreement with CVS Health. And what they're going to be doing is developing a variety of drone delivery use cases uh, for business to business consumer applications. And what's going to happen is they're going to be evaluating the delivery of the prescriptions and retail products to the homes of CVS customers. So, you know, obviously right now with CVS, you can go drop off your prescription, or if you have a refill, you can go on the CVS app and actually request your refill. So maybe depending on where you live in the area, you might eventually be having a drone delivery. Um, they're also partnering with the wholesale pharmaceutical distributor called Amerisource Version, which is a leading global healthcare solutions provider. And what will happen is the collaboration will deploy the UPS Flight Forward Drone Airline to transport certain pharmaceutical supplies and records to medical campuses across the U.S. And then they're going to basically uh, look to expand to its um, use on other site uh, locations. So this is quite cool. Like, I mean, I know a lot of people that, you know, they have a prescription or they have refills. And then, you know, let's say they have kids at home or the weather's bad. And they're like, oh, my God, or if I, have, I have to get a refill. I forgot to go pick it up. So I think it'll be really interesting how, you know, this technology is really amazing to be able to witness and life changing. I mean, before people go to the pharmacy, pick things up or have someone else pick up the prescription. I mean, I just can't believe it, how this technology, you're going to have a drone deliver things to your door. So that's just incredible. Like who would think that drone delivery would deliver your prescriptions? This is just amazing. So I can't wait to see that. Um, and hear more about it because I'm sure it's going to be we're going to hear more more um, more of this happening uh, with drone delivery, not just with the pharmaceutical industry. <clears throat> I won't be surprised; <laughs> it'll expand to other parts of uh, other industries as well that do deliveries. So, Jim, let's hear about this chart of UPS. Yeah, this is a tricky chart. Now, just a while back, yeah. Amazon uh, went out and bought them a bunch of electric trucks, and they are going to stop using the UPS service. So I kind of brought this stock down a little bit. Actually, you had a pretty good little sell-off on it right around this 112.59 area. And so we've had a retracement bounce on that 112.44 or 112.59 that I had here. It actually had a low of 112.44. These are my extended trend lines that I've, I have a different pattern compared to a lot of traders out there. I like, you know, I like to use history as, as a Thing that can repeat itself and it often does when you're trading stocks a lot of people aren't key to that but it's worked for me for the last 15 years and so 
we've got a resistance level here right now at 118. We're, we're, we're after hours, we're at 119.29 actually. So she's going to run up. I think we're going to hit that resistance level that we had on a 20 day at 120.89. That's going to be a strong resistance. I've got a 120, well, I have a 120.77. So I can adjust that just a little bit to 120.68. And if we can get back up to there, that's probably going to be my exit sign if I'm in the trade. Because we did hit that top up there once before and it did pull back to the 34. And then she went ahead and had that breakout and then got that, that Amazon news and it pulled on back. But still yet, we still have higher lows, which I appreciate. And right now we're crossing above that 9 EMA and that 9 is crossing that 34. So that's a good good bullish sign too. So let's see if this thing can go. I did have a support, a resistance level right here. It went between 117 and 117. 56 looks like somewhere right around in there and we'd have broke that out in the past five to so trading days week and a half to a couple week trading days and we did have a high of that 120 so that's the resistance level we got a break you could see we had it right up here about 120 13 so let's see if this stock keeps running up my resistance level is going to be i'm here i'm going to be here at 120 77 hello yeah i got you <clears throat> I can hear you. Hello? So the next one we're going to talk about is. Hello. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be ONTX. Yeah. So ONTX is on Conova Therapeutics. And this is a phase three biopharmaceutical company. You know, they have a pipeline of targeted anti cancer agents. And um, they have three product candidates in clinical trials and several active preclinical ones. Um, you know, they really looking for, um, you know, they want to basically help people with acute myeloid leukemia. And, you know, there's not really a lot of advancements in this uh, area. So um, they're currently dealing um, with, I guess, doing some testing to see what's, what is available and um, looking to hopefully help some medical treatments in the future. But ONTX, the reason we like it is we could see today there was a nice volume surge there, huge uh, volume bars coming through. And we also have a gap fill. And it uh, looks like the gap wants to get filled. So I'm going to let Jim talk about this chart. And some people I know are swing trading it. Some people probably day traded it. But definitely keep this on watch because there's I don't, the gap's still not filled. So there could still be a continuation on this uh, tomorrow. So, Jim, yeah. let's hear about ONTX chart. All right. Yearly high on ONTX was 605 and the low was at 71. So we're down here at the bottom. Looks to me like a nice little fish, fish hook. You could almost say it's turned into a cup. But um, you can see it on the 20-day chart, that 71 cent low. I got a low support here at 95. I'd hate to see it go any lower than that. If it does, we've got an 89 right here. So that 89 is going to be your low, low support. And I'm going to put another support right here at 103. That's going to be your first one. And the resistance as we got a break is going to be that 114, 118, and 128. So let's pull up the 20-day chart. Just have a look at it. You can see what I mean by a pretty big old bowl right there. And the gap that we've got to go ahead and get to is going to be that 128. If it breaks that 118 and hits that 128, then we could be sailing up to a new high of 156, 158 area on the 20-day chart. And that's ONTX. And that's it for the aftermarket report. And Miss Vegas, you got anything to say goodbye? She's probably not here, so we're going to go ahead and shut no, this. I'm here. I'm here. Oh. Okay. I'm here. I was just going to say, um, you know, today was actually not a bad day in the market. It's a little bit slow, I found, on the penny land. Um, <clears throat> not as busy, so uh, we'll see what tomorrow is going to bring. But the markets, you know, had um, the market on close was on the buy side. So uh, we'll see what that does tomorrow. And uh, don't forget that uh, we have a lot of earnings as well. So um, sometimes with earnings season in the pipeline, uh People don't want to hold uh, a lot of stocks. They want to wait and find out what's going to happen with some of these uh, mid-cap, large caps because, you know, they're really relying heavily on guidance information as well. So 
stay tuned. We have a lot of earnings tomorrow. And we have McDonald's uh, is one of them. So uh, definitely keep a watch for the information on many, many, many big players. So that's it for now, Jim. Have a great evening, everyone, and we'll see you tomorrow. All right. Well, I've started an options challenge myself. I've started trading options about two or three months ago when the pennies were kind of slacking, and I'm liking it. So I've got an options challenge that I started in the room, and I'm posting all my my buys and sells and my P and Ls at the end of the day and and at the beginning of each day if I can remember to do all that. We do manage a pretty good size room, and I want to thank Miss Vegas for getting me started in these options. And that's very appreciative. We also have a little link here for our Twitter bird. Follow us. Hit that link. We're up to 714 followers. We want to get to that 1,000 by the end of the year. And that's going to be the I Love Stocks icon that you see in the in the right lower right corner right there. There it is. And then we also have our Stock Twits links right here. Pinterest, our YouTube channel. Please subscribe and ring that bell for future updates. And we also have a little merchandise store where you can buy some of our merchandise. Well, this is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. We do appreciate the follow. And please ring that bell and subscribe. And today's date is October the 21st. And we love stocks.